Well, I'm Malcolm Bruce. I'm the chair of the International Development Committee, and we're in Ethiopia. We're looking at the whole issue of poverty reduction and how the status and role of women uh, eff affects it. And this particular community is engaged in a project to try and eliminate child marriage. Early child marriage has been established here for generations, so it's very well dug in. <laughs> Some of them will be married when they're eight, nine or ten, even younger in some cases. Uh, and that's pretty shocking by our standards, not least because the girls are neither physically nor emotionally fit for sex or childbirth or any of those things. Parents think they're helping their children by marrying them off because it protects their uh, virginity so that they can marry as virgins. It protects, uh, if you like, their security, their future because it means that they're placed in another family. Uh, that sounds good, but the downsides much outweigh that. So this is what we are trying to do. We identify the root causes and we are trying to take them away so that the families are not pressurized, they are not stigmatized. We are uh, training uh, people in all the sectors, from justice, education, etc. And then we are training people from the villages, change makers, change agents. Oh, what we expect from the member who will participate in this is to go back and continue the discussion within the association and also to change the bylaw. When so, so is a one member from each group? Yes, one of them. Yes, the most influential. Usually we ask them to select a woman and a man. So they go back and they, they start the discussion. After a while, whenever they are ready, they change the bylaw of the association. And therefore they can decide anybody who give away their children before the age of 18, they won't be part of this association. Right. For the community to decide and to condemn early marriage and to eradicate it, we want them to first understand the problem, identifying the root causes, analyzing it, and then identifying the positive aspects in their community and use those positive aspects to respond to the problems that they are facing. External aid right now is indispensable for us to be able to implement this uh, new movement that engages the whole community into a conversation. What we're really interested in is how DFID's uh, support for this program is helping perhaps to accelerate something that the community is wanting to do anyway because that actually is always the best way to deliver development. In nearly 50% of the places where we, where, where we are working, we are seeing immediate results. <laughs> I think we've really been impressed. This is a program 
that is not anything but superficial. It goes deep, it recognises the complexities and it's working with the grain of the community and it's found people in the community who really want to lead that process of change, which I think really encourages us that this will work and it will make a difference. Well, nothing beats coming out into the field. Uh, you can have all the committees you want, you can interview as many people as you like, but seeing things on the ground is what it's all about and that's what the International Development Select Committee is all about. I've learned an awful lot about how the programme at Difford is running is changing the lives of people in this community and we take that message back to the taxpayer in Britain. They have so much which is good, they have uh, such a strong community life, uh, they clearly know and care for each other uh, and I think if uh, they can maintain those strong community links, those strong family links whilst at the same time giving young women a chance to have a real positive start in life then, then it really will be win-win.